Hey, this is Rick, and welcome to Spit Take Podcast Presents, the Shooting Star Press WrestleCast. And today, this is the post show for the Royal Rumble 2024, where me and Zach will be discussing the Royal Rumble, and it is just fan analysis and opinion. This is Zach. Say hi, Zach. Hi, Zach. Uh, we started off with a woman's Royal Rumble, R- yeah, the Royal Rumble match. Um, I'm just going to go down and kind of talk about what I thought was kind of the bigger moments of the match. Zach, you can kind of chime in with your, your thoughts and opinions on that too. I mean, first things first was the return of Naomi, right? Like that just happened right away. I wasn't surprised by that. Like he was a pretty big fan of her. Like she was doing some decent work in TNA, seeing her get that moment in the beginning of the match you can see it tell the audience just you know Rick greatly appreciated her return and they really gave her a nice little shine making her almost like the iron woman of the match you know starting it off with uh, Natalia yeah she went pretty far in it didn't she yeah there came a couple uh, other ladies but ca- one thing I want to point out is, like, there's a couple ladies that came out, and usually you got a couple, you know, people that come out in a Royal Rumble match, and they don't get much of a reaction, but uh, Candice LeRae, I feel like she should get more of a reaction than she does. I just feel like, uh, for me, she's better of a, of, a, of a wrestler than what she gets credit for by the fans. I don't know. An appearance from Jordan Grace. I don't watch TNA. Um, uh, apparently, she's a TNA Knockouts champion, and they acknowledge TNA. And I s- kind of saw they kind of put her toe to toe with uh, Ivy Nile at first, kind of a power versus power kind of thing there. And then they put her eye to eye with uh, Bianca <clears throat> Belair and had Belair kind of show her power with her. Um, I don't know if they uh, wanted to kind of show, hey, this is uh, kind of a future future uh, WWE competitor here. She looks like she's got a lot of talent. She's got a good look. Uh, she's very athletic. Uh, I definitely think she's got star power that can uh, that can definitely be used in a WWE. Ah, agreed, but this is. Like, kind of, like, with this new regime with Triple H, like, he's acknowledging, like, companies from, you know, outside, you know, especially TNA, because what was it they had last year? They had Mickey James come in, and they acknowledged her as TNA Knockouts Champion. So, it's kind of been part of the Yeah, weren't they leaving something out? Like, they were saying she was, like, Knockouts champion, they're leaving out TNA or something like that. Or no, I believe they. Acknowledge they were like them. leaving they... something out about it that they were still complaining about. Yeah, um, but she had the belt and everything, and came out, and then it come out with her WWE. Well, thing. she had she the belt, but TNA. they wouldn't say something on air, though. I know that they were still yeah. complaining about. It. I can't quite remember what it was. If anybody that's listening um, remembers, go ahead and comment it, comment on it. Uh, I, I can't quite remember. Uh, it's also 1220 at night, and I can't think past 2 p.m., so that's just how I work. Um, Fair enough. But also your point about Candace Del Rey, you know, that's kind of been part for the course rumor. Like, they don't – you say she – unless she's associated with her husband, Johnny Gargano, they don't really – fan-wise doesn't really give her appreciation, but you're – Talking about a solid hand, what? He's probably been in the business for about like 20-some years at this point. Just now, yeah. recent years, have been able to make it to the WWE. Right. Um, next, I just wanted to point out uh, my gripes about Maxine Dupree being in this match were right. She's absolutely terrible, and I cringed every time I seen her try anything in this match The from trying to do anything with her legs I don't know what she was doing she wasn't doing any Hurricane Rana I don't know what she 
was trying to do uh, to uh, reverse Caterpillar or something. That was kind of freaky. I, um, but uh, I don't know. Do you have anything on Maxine Dupree? I just... I just don't understand putting people that don't know what they're doing in there. It just looks cringe to me and just uh, demeans the product. Yeah, a little bit, but I don't know. They you they do just like putting like little fun spots in there, like like fun, you know, R Truth popping in there and like oh, this ain't the men's rumble. Just doing a little. It, to me, it's just little fun moments. You know, if you do it right, give like someone at least a little bit of spotlight to where you don't, you know, try to do what they can do. But, eh. I just never got like, you can just be anywhere near the WWE and you can get a <clears throat> chance. You don't have to actually be a competitor. You can like, uh, be the janitor and you could get a chance at the WWE title for some reason. You know what I mean? Like, right. um, it doesn't make any sense to me, but, um, next, as I predicted, Jade Cargill debuted. She did go pretty far in it. I thought she, they made her look incredibly s- strong. Uh, I thought Nia Jax kind of, first of all, they made Nia Jax again, make incredible, make Nia Jax look incredibly strong, which in turn made Jade Cargill look incredibly strong. As I said, WWE will make her look like a star as she already is a star. Uh, agreed, which they typically always try to keep Nia as this is like force of nature. Like she's more or less like and these matches like the Big Show or Kane Roll, where they she can just tear through everybody, and everybody has to gang up on her just to get her out of the ring. But no, they I like what WWE does best is presenting stars as a star and giving her that moment. I I get the idea of using Nia Jax because you already made her try to look so strong. So that makes Jade look even stronger doing that. Uh, there's uh, a couple little spots there that if you got maybe a, somebody with a little bit more experience can make it look a little better. Like when they went to, when Jade went to throw her over the ring, it just that seemed a little eh in a couple moments there. But they got made, they made it happen. I will say uh, the whole woman's match as a whole, I thought, kind of looked like that, but I'll mention that in a second. Um, (laughs) But I wrote next to Cargill, Bel Air, uh, standing face-to-face, butterflies. Um, I like how they had that, how that kind of just like lined up perfectly with them just standing there face to face, just these two women that look like they're sculpted by the goddesses um, and are incredibly gifted. So, um, and then Liv Morgan, of course, made her return. And uh, just to me, that was awesome because she's definitely made her mark on the woman's roster. Oh, it was fun seeing Liv come back. And again, to your point, saying like people not making things look good, she actually, when she was in there, she actually made her shit look good. Right. Like, especially the nice little Indian helping take care of Jade and whatnot. But you know, it was a fun thing of seeing because it's Bianca's basically, she's the Jade's pan of like. Bianca is what Jade could be because Bianca's already, she's what, well seasoned and whatnot. You know, she's more or less like John Cena of like the women's division. Like, you know, she's good in the ring. She knows, you know, she's got the crowd behind her, knows what she's doing, making it, make it all look good and everything. Jade, has all the same physical gifts, if not more than what Bianca has, but 
maybe still needs a little bit more, you know, cook in the oven. But that is definitely something, a nice matchup you would like to see, you know, down the road when she is, you know, gotten more comfortable in the ring. And we could have, like, say, maybe, like, next year's WrestleMania. That could be a really fun match. And I do think Jade looks good. Um, I could tell they have been working her because I think her power moves are looking good. And... Of course, the winner, Bailey. Um, will that put a wedge between her and EO Sky? Well, kind of. They've they've already like been teasing that for the longest time, even before she won the belt. So, being that that, yeah, I, I don't I don't see her facing Rhea Ripley. That storyline looks that that storyline sounds the makes the most sense, right? Oh yeah, it's it pretty much like what Bailey started this group, but it's almost like becoming like the woman on the outside with all the new people coming in. So it just seems very fitting that you know they do get well, out at WrestleMania. Well, when uh, was the Kabuki Twins won the tag uh, women's tag championships last night? I kind of noticed uh, Bailey looked kind of out of place trying to cheer with them. Um, I don't know if that was meant to look like that or not, but it seemed like she didn't like fit in trying to cheer with them. And uh, EO Sky and the Kabuki twins seemed like their own little clique. Kind of like with like what was it when uh say in New Japan like Bullet Club when the elite kind of started up where basically you got your sub faction within the faction and that becomes bigger than the faction itself. And uh I did see a little behind the scenes uh video of when the Kabuki twins came back and uh they were very grateful about women winning the women's uh tag championships. So it was very adorable like how grateful they were. And it's weird because to me, the women's championship, it's not like, or the tag championships, it's like, it's not like a very competitive championship because it's like, they just create a women's tag champion. It's not like there's like a real tag ta championship division. It's like, who can we put together now to feud now just for the hell of it? You know, um, it's not like there's like a real division, like there's a men's division, you know? I think that that should just come with time because of like what, like the entire history, at least the uh, like big time, like WWE, WWCW, like all the major promotions, there hasn't really been a women's tag division. It's always been single titles. So I think it's just something like you introduce the concept and it's going to take a little bit of time to develop what the history of men's tag teams been you know we're, it's almost as old as wrestling itself and we'll see what you know the future holds and we still got to talk about netflix and how that like with the shows what that's all going to look like because obviously with all the time that's on screen like you got to fit a women's championship nxt do we need nxt anymore you know like what's what is the plan for the future now? Uh, now that obviously things are going to be changing. Um, next we got, oh wait, actually first, before we move on, uh, what is your rating out of 10 for the w Women's Royal Rumble? I don't know, like, I said this first rating really done, so you kind of want to set a precedent. <laughs> I'm going to say, well, they like 6.5. It's like, it was solid. I mean, it was good entertaining, but like, I don't think it was just like, oh my God, that just blew my mind. But it, it was good serviceable rumble. Yeah. I said a 6 out of 10. I thought it was entertaining, more exciting, like, Comebacks, probably, like I said, more sloppier uh, toss-outs. The Kabuki Warrior, what's her name? Uh, uh, Gary Zane. When, when she 
almost like fell and then fell. I don't think she was supposed to fall there. Yeah. Um, when she was hanging on to the side. Uh, that was a tough spot to try to get. Like, she, I, like when, she, when she first that landed, was a like tough one spot. foot hit. Yeah. Well, I'm wondering if she was supposed to be like that at all. Uh, I think the you know, spot it was. I think the spot was planned. It's just couldn't quite make it happen when it was time to make it happen. Right. I'm wondering if something else was supposed to happen there. Yeah. Um, I thought I'm just a big fan of Jade Cargo. I was a big fan of hers. I think she was probably one of my favorite <laughs> AEW wrestlers just because I'm a fan of bad guys. I'm a fan of heels. Uh, I'm a fan of personalities, and I like her as a heel personality, and she's a great monster heel, so I'm glad to have her in WWE. I And uh, I thought Bianca um, looked really strong, strong in this, too. Um, and uh, um, we didn't get the boss back, though. Uh, yeah. That was sad. Yeah, that might still be an ongoing process. Don't really know what's going on there in terms of where they're feeling. You'd imagine with like Triple H kind of running creative, that would be, you know be a little bit more incentive to go back. But you know, maybe she's just happy doing what she's doing right now. Like she's having a lot of success on her own outside of WWE. Maybe just kind of maybe she's like a John Moxley situation where she's having more fun at least initially, outside, where she's got a little bit more freedom of what she gets to say and do. Um, next was the Fatal 4-Way. Uh, Roman Reigns, AJ Styles, uh, LA Knight, uh, Randy Orton. Uh, what was your thoughts on this match? I mean, to me, it was a good, solid match. Like I kind of already knew what the case was going to be. Roman making the win, just more or less how it was going to happen, but... I thought it was, you know, good, solid, solid uh, match to kind of keep going where you want to go with it. And then by the looks of it, we're going to probably get ourselves a big singles match between L.A. Knight and A.J. Styles for WrestleMania, which should be a nice marquee match. It was it was a solid match from like four solid hands in the WWE. Yeah, that that's pretty much what I thought it was, was just a solid match, really. I felt like, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but they, like, like uh, piped in booze for Roman, because it seemed like people had the one-up, but then they were all booing. <clears throat> like, that didn't make sense to me. They had a really good close two count with AJ's phenomenal forearm that came in and saved the day. Roman Reigns was the winner. It was... Pretty much as predicted. I thought maybe they should have dropped the belt there for uh, for once, but uh, perhaps Roman Reigns will never drop the belt and he'll die with it. I mean, at this point, that's just what's going to happen. No, I think they got a, a clear plan of what they're doing right now. It's kind of seeming like it. It's just we're more or less in for the ride. I, I, I didn't see it changing hands at all tonight. It didn't seem like the moment, even though you got... You say L.A. Knight being the dude, you know, he's top guy in the company or about their top merch mover, mover in the company right now. But maybe, you know, maybe just wait a little bit longer before that you pull that trigger, I guess. If, you know, especially him, like, if it, like, even, like, keep proving that he's just going to keep moving, like, they keep in popularity and all that. When you like do that for that long, you know, it, he he's gonna get the belt eventually. I think just not right now. Yeah, but I mean, problem is he's up there in age, right? Like, well, the thing uh, is, like, he's like forty three. Yeah, but you he was um look at the uh, pretty much everybody in that match was around that age, right? So it's like. But everybody who's in that match has had the title twice, at least. True, but, like, AJ's been in the company since 2016. Randy Orton's been there since, like, 2000s. 
I I see within like another within a year him getting a title. <clears throat> yeah, hopefully. Especially um, like if he gets a nice performance at WrestleMania, like he just keeps proving, yeah, you know, just keep proving. Eventually, it's just he's going to be like as the Cody says, undeniable. Yeah, hopefully, it's just for me. It's like strike while the iron iron's hot, man. Like it's been hot for a while. You never know when it's going to die out. Like people can get bored. And people can get bored of him. And, you know, he can get injured. You don't know what can happen. This is your chance. You know, um, this is your chance to, like, make make it happen. I don't know. Just to me, it's just weird. But they know what they're doing. They're the, think, they're the money makers. I think right now, like, granted, they've had that problem where they don't pull the trigger. And don't strike when the iron's hot, and then like wait till it cools down, and then it's like a little too late. But at least I think this, that's why I get anxious because yeah. I've seen it too many times. You know, you've seen right. guys like Scott Hall not get it that you know, um, even though it's Scott Hall's fault, but like um, Magnum TA or you know, guys that <clears throat> like you wish what you should have gotten it, Roddy Piper. Uh, Jake the Snake, guys that you wish would have had it, but for whatever reason didn't get it. Oh yeah, but I don't know. I think it's gonna happen. They've clearly invest or investing stock in him. Like he's doing the Slim Jim commercials. He's featured in all sorts of advertisements and what's. And they clearly <laughs> do believe in the guy. So mm. I, I think it, I think it's I think I think it's gonna happen. It just. Right now, they kind of got plans set, and they're trying to more or less pay off this long-term booking that they got yeah. going on. They're doing a lot of long-term booking, it seems. Um, it's welcomed, but yeah, there are those times, though, you do kind of want to, as you say, strike when the iron's hot. Yeah. Um, I do want to give a reminder to anybody who may be watching or listening. Uh, please take the time to like, subscribe, or follow uh, Spit Take, Spit Take Podcast. And uh, that would be much appreciated. Uh, and we do release our flagship podcast, Spit Take Podcast, every Friday. Uh, the next is a U.S. title match, Logan Paul uh, versus uh, Kevin Owens. I can't even think of his name. Fight Owens fight. Um, biggest thing I thought, biggest, coolest part of the match, Logan Paul does a buck sh- buckshot lariat. Um, he does it very well. <laughs> it was a pretty cool... Yeah, it was a pretty cool spot. As I said, I take Logan Paul serious uh, when I watch this. Owens uh, gets caught with the brass knuckles uh, after, I don't know, was it some kind of YouTuber that came in or something like that? And that was one of uh, Logan's buddies, like one of his one little of cronies. Logan's buddies. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, and then, then uh, uh, Austin Aries or whatever he is. It's just Austin Aries Theory. now or something. Or Austin, Austin Theory, Theory and... Oh, not Austin Aries, yeah. Austin Theory um, comes down and then passes uh, ha- passes Logan some brass knucks, and then Kevin Owens fights him off and uh, gets the brass knucks. And for some reason, he's got him waving out while he's pinning him, and the 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 ref sees him on him and then disqualifies him. I thought that ending was dumb as shit, um, personally. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I fell flat for me. Uh, But I guess they're trying to not make anybody look weak here. Uh, Is their attempt is what I'm assuming. Well, like Logan's the heel. He's the bad guy. Like he was trying to do his underhanded tactics uh, to eke out the win. It's just one of those moments like, okay, what we don't want to make. Kevin look weak in this moment and Logan's kind of the, you know, chicken heel. So I was like, all right, well, we can do this. It'll keep, uh, 
you know, I'll keep the belt on Logan, which is what they want, and uh, make o- Owens still look pretty strong. It wasn't like he was necessarily waving it. He just got to take him off, and the ref just sees it went on his hand as he's got the leg wrap with it. And that nice little fun moment, just Owens being Owens and beating up Logan after the fact. I, I, I appreciate that powerbomb through the table. Yep, we got a table bomb. That was great. Um, and then I appreciated the WWE 2K24 commercial. I might actually get this one. I haven't really bought a WWE game for a couple years. And when you're marketing some kind of career mode where I get to play as a wrestler's <clears throat> career, specifically like an old school wrestler, if I could play like Hulk Hogan's whole career, I'm freaking in. Like that's, I don't know if that's what it was, but that's what it kind of seemed like to me. Like if I could play the Legion of Doom's career, that would be freaking awesome. And uh, like, I'm tired of this, like create your own wrestler. I want to like, I want to play as Macho Man, dude. It's kind of their uh, showcase mode and their advertising, like playing like some of the big moments from <clears throat> WrestleMania, playing your Hulk, you know, Hulk Hogan beating Andre, st- uh, yeah. Steve Austin and whatnot. Like, like I, yeah, that's what I, I want. Yeah, I've fallen out of the WWE games after like 2K kind of takeover. I've, I've bought some of them. That's always it's always been my jam. The wrestling games but lately like they these like this i've got 23 which was solid enough still want to see them like add some of the old features back and whatnot but 24 still looks like they just you know about what 23 was but just like slightly a little bit better <clears throat> they're at least doing a lot of like content like that like this is like the second or third like little showcase thing that they've added to it like what you're referring to yeah well i still got like what wrestlemania 2000 or road to wrestlemania and stuff like that down there and uh you know all the nintendo 64 ones i could spend a freaking day streaming those games and i could figure that out um and then they advertise the uh uh the Elimination Chamber from uh, Australia, which we will definitely be uh, doing our little analysis from. So don't worry about that. Uh, next, we had the uh, Men's Royal Rumble match. Any, I had a couple big moments, I, but it didn't seem like it was like a big moment match. It was like a solid match to me wasn't like as many like big like comebacks and stuff as the woman's Royal Rumble match, but like big one like big face offs. Yeah. Uh Jimmy and Jay, like you were talking about, uh right off the bat, it just played lip service to it. It it, it didn't go too deep into it. Uh Andrade made a return. That was I fun. like that. I think he's a great talent. Like he can do about anything. Um, he's a true luchador, I think, with a freaking big, you know, decent ripped body. Um, and he should be a star. Um, he's he's one of those guys, like, he has, like, all the tools. It's just he never seems to get put, like, in the right spot or the right time to really take advantage of it. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's fun to watch, though. My favorite um, spot is him just, like, where he just, like, lays out in between the top and middle rope when people think they're just going to throw him out of the ring and he just catches himself and just lounges about. Mm-hmm. That's when you know yeah. you got somebody good in the ring. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, um, last, the, the other big thing was, as we talked about, Punk and Cody. Went straight to the end. Um, 
I know Gunther had a couple of uh, head to heads too, but the big one was Punk and Cody, like we talked about. And uh, as I predicted, uh, Cody was the winner. Yep. Um, I think we both got that one. What, what title do you think he'll go after? Oh, uh, it's Roman. Easy. Like, even though he's on yeah. the wall, but like, it, it, they were already teasing it right there at the end. And yeah. honestly, that's no offense to the world heavyweight title, which I do really like the design, and I liked it when they first came off with it. It's something old yet new. But in terms of like the story, mm -hmm. the one that the lineage of the WWE title is the one that's going to mean the most in that story. And really, just being that he couldn't quite get it done because of shenanigans last year, it's just going to mean that much more when he gets it done this year. Well, so we st still got some predictions to make because yeah. he still got the world heavyweight championship, but I, they still kind of tease that Gunther uh, Seth Rollins too. Yeah, I'm going to say because I. Depending on Seth Rollins, because it looks like they're just trying to build up that he's going to make this miraculous return at WrestleMania. So, and no, Roman's not going to be defending the title in the chamber. So, what I'm going to say is the men's chambers match is probably going to be the number one contender for Seth's belt because Cody's going to confirm he's going after Roman's. Okay. That's what I think is probably going to happen there. Yeah, probably. It'll have to be. Unless you're going to have one of the def titles defended in there, but I don't see them doing the Roman thing. Unless they really... Well, you got, you got one woman's and one men's, too. Yeah, well, there's going to be a men and there's going to be a women's, and imagine with the fact that it's in Australia and she's part of the advertisement currently, I can see Rhea Ripley's belt being defended in the women's. Yeah, and that that will well, give like, and that'll give like a chance for them like to kind of maybe build up a little bit more for uh, Eos title with a uh, Bailey to go right. into WrestleMania. Any predictions for uh, who's going to be in the men's elimination chamber? Punk, McIntyre. Who do you think? I want to say it's probably going to be Raw guys. So I'm going to say. I see Jay Uso, which I just kind of want to say right now. At one point, he should be winning the world title, either or. Like I think, <clears throat> I we saw. I think we saw it when we both went to Fast Lane earlier this year, and then watching him like entrance for the Royal Rumble. He's he's about got it. The whole crowd behind him, and he's one of the top merch sellers right now. I think he's getting a, I think he deserving eventually of a world title push. Just whether if he whether if it's a long run or not, at least giving him the belt once. But I want to say he's in the chamber. I see Drew because he's you can always throw him in that position. We'll go Punk. will should be in there. I say Gunther goes in there because yeah, you know, if he's wanting to fight for that belt at WrestleMania. I would throw Finn Balor in there because he'll be a solid option. And I kind of want to say Damian Priest, even though he's got the money in the bank, but he was in the Royal Rumble. So it's like, why are you in the Rumble if you already got the guaranteed world title shot? But I want to say it's going to be about that. And there'll be at least some little bit of shenanigans in that match that J Jimmy's going to pop in and cost Jay his chance. And that will probably go into their storyline, being that there wasn't that much set up in the Rumble. Just a nice little face-off in the beginning of the match. Well, unless Damian Priest decides he wants to be a two champion, uh, two champ, uh, you know, two champion guy, like, he could do that. You never know; possibilities are endless. But he can go for any championship. Before we go, we also wanted to talk a little bit about Netflix signing WWE deal for 
2025. I think we've mentioned it a little bit. I think that does present a good opportunity, but I kind of (laughs) now all of a sudden fail to see the difference between streaming and cable and streaming seems a little more complicated and cost a lot more now because (laughs) it all has commercials and all of it now. And you have to pay for different services now. Um, it doesn't make much sense anymore. Um, but I think WWE can definitely like condense Raw. It doesn't have to be this three-hour thing, uh, which is probably affecting me the most. This three hours long. When I was like a teenager, three hours long was awesome. I'm an adult. I can't do this three hour stuff. Um, Mm. But like being able to like maybe spread stuff out into like different types of shows and stuff like that. Streaming types of stuff might affect things a little more. I don't know. Well, like the whole point, uh, the reason why they went to three hours, they just proved that, you know, how much more they can make off the advertising revenue. So if that can get diminished a little bit, being that it's going to streaming, maybe that puts the push to go back to two hours, which is about the perfect length for a weekly wrestling show. One hour, just not enough. Two hours gives you pretty much like all you want and still want craving a little more. Three hours just starts to become a chore to get through. And when you've been doing it for so long trying to keep up with everything on a weekly basis it it gets to be a bit much well when you still got another four hours for the same company and three hours three or four hours for another company and two hours for another company and uh yeah it's hard to keep track of um i see it happening because what was it at least now like with uh under triple h like they've started like to condense shows a little bit like what well, even though this was a bit long but there was a, they only really did four matches tonight and they tried to you know trim it down as and keep it as digestible as possible in terms of how much time you're actually spent watching the show so they're starting to kind of realize hey we've been dragging these shows on for far too long so maybe that might mean well we'll maybe trimming down the the flagship show a little bit right by the way uh this friday on the spit take podcast we are talking dc cartoons um uh, yeah and uh we are also uh talking about the new uh roadhouse trailer uh we talk about the Ricky Stanicky trailer that starts John Zena. Um, it's freaking s- silly as hell. Uh, I definitely recommend watching that trailer. Uh, did you see that trailer? Eh, it looks pretty interesting. You got like it's, some it's goofy. You got like some pretty funny people in on that movie. That could be interesting to watch. And Zach Efron's usually really good and stuff. So. Um, yeah, but we talk about that. We talk a little bit about the new game Pow World, uh, which blatantly looks like it has freaking Pikachu and shit in it. Um, it's kind of funny, but like, it's actually getting good reviews and I kind of want to play it. Uh, so we talk about that and, uh, yeah, so check that out. And then the week after that, like for Valentine's, we kind of like talk about what's wrong with romantic comedies and we might actually like some so uh check that out too uh we have uh adam's sister on steph uh who uh, has a bit pretty big social media following and reads horoscopes or some shit or tarot cards or something i don't know um she does stuff anyways uh anything to add before we uh wrap it up zach i don't know this show was i would say solid like it was not a one that's just gonna blow your mind but like 
there's been far worse rumble shows. This was at least, you know, solid. You know, you're not, not a total you know, waste of time. Just more or less now excited to see like what storylines we get going into WrestleMania and looking forward to Elimination Chamber. Yes. Um, I think this does do a lot to... I think it showcased a lot of what the WWE has right now. It also showed some of the failures it has done to d- develop some of the talent it has with the crowd, with especially with the female talent, where some of, like like I said, Candice LeRae was one of them, but there was a couple of talent that came out, and there's absolutely no reaction. At least with all the men, there was a reaction with it, like about every yeah. single one of them. It's like <clears throat> the crowd knew them, but the the women, and uh, I'm not one of those that's just like a feminist, but like the women, they didn't uh, know some of them at all, it seemed like. But it was at least with like the women's division, like we got like, we got some of our heavy hitters, but like. Especially like putting them into a thirty woman match like this, they're 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 still like they're still developing to making some of these women like bigger names, and it's just gonna like right now it's mainly what like there's in the company there's probably about like I would say like five or six on the main roster that you really care about in terms of like star power and then there's like maybe like a couple prospects on a on a NXT that you really know or maybe potentially want to see so it's just more or less trying to we need to start doing a maybe a better job of showcasing them or giving them opportunities to win people over for sure it's probably about giving them personality too uh yeah you know, um, I think that's part of it. They're not showing off their personality as much or not giving the chance to. Uh, there's definitely not a lot of screen time given to them. I will say that um, the screen time is given to the top women, the undercard women, not as much yeah. for sure. I think it's also um, another... Another thing on that's like I think we've had like a few of our name wrestle name female wrestlers that we know kind of not on the rumble or just injured whatever reason like Charlotte Flair's not in there she's recovering from injuries was it oh, Raquel yeah. Ra- Raquel Rodriguez has kind of been like fun to kind of pop out like she wasn't in the rumble and then of course you know, your two but Io Sky who's big but maybe not huge but at least known and then of course Rhea Ripley's like one of your your biggest stars right now not being in there just more or less on the outside watch, looking in on that so we got names you but always, we just need to build more they always have uh, they always don't have enough women for the rumble it seems um, that's why they always pull. that's why they have to pull from TNA that's yeah. That's why I, they I, have to get Mickey James. It it, it, it kind of makes it fun as as like uh maybe like some of the WWE fans don't know, but like wider wrestling fans kind of get into it more. Kind of like to see it more a little bit. I like to see like guys you know that are regularly wrestling for you know other promotions as well, like making an appearance. Like how much fun would it be for like? Probably won't happen, but how cool would it be if John Moxley popped into the Rumble, even if for like a night? That could be fun as hell. Well, yeah, that'd be I love great. This, I would love to see like that type of stuff happen more. Yeah, that would be awesome if, uh, you know, if them and Tony Khan came with up with a deal. Uh, who knows? See what <laughs> happens. You know, maybe they'll come with the. Uh, you know, forbidden door part two, <laughs> forbidden freaking uh, gaping hole. <laughs> you know, uh, it's the nice thing because being that 
this man is out. We got a new regime on things. So well, maybe this is stuff that we can look forward to now. Yeah. It's new regime, so uh, new way of thinking, you know. Uh, all right. Well, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Uh, we'll definitely see you uh, during the Elimination Chamber, and we will be uh, also be going live and doing recordings bi-weekly. And you can find us on all your major platforms where you do your pod or uh, listen to your podcasts, watch your videos, or catch your social medias. And as usual, level up, guys.